Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our SAGE's Pearl session. I'm Denise G from Mass General Hospital. This is Lily Chang from uh, Virginia Mason University. And uh, we wanted to welcome you here, welcome you to San Antonio. Uh, as you may or may not know, SAGE's Pearls um, is a set of videos that was created by SAGE's a few years ago that takes advanced laparoscopic procedures and deconstructs them into basic steps. And then you can see how the experts do perform each of these steps. Um, and then there's just pearls, tips, and tricks that uh, the experts have um, that they share with you on the videos. And so we made this session to kind of parallel and, and run through some of these videos. Um, it'll be run in a panel format, um, run by subsection leaders um, who will go through this, the pearls video and then stop at certain points to ask for input from experts, and we'll also be asking for a lot of audience participation as well um, if you have any um, questions for our panelists. So uh, we'll get started <clears throat> with laparoscopic Nissen fundoplication. Um, our section leader will be Dr. Horacio Asbun from Mayo Clinic, Florida, and our panelists will be Dr. Brandt Olschlager from University of Washington in Seattle, Dr. Barry Salke from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, as well as Dr. David Easter from UC San Diego. Thank you, Dr. G, Dr. Chan. Good afternoon. Hopefully we're gonna have a, not only a very instructive session, but also a very entertaining session. Um, we're going to try to experiment a little bit that I'm gonna ask you for patience because the, se the, the format of the session is gonna be trying to run the, um, uh, basically the PEARLS project. As Dr. G explained, this was um, done several years ago and there are still procedures being done. The goal of this was for the, uh, the reader to try to go and see a whole procedure or each part of the procedure done in different ways by different surgeons. In that way, you could choose which way you like best. Then today, what we're gonna do, at least with the laparoscopic Nissen, is we're gonna have three of the participants um, of this project to give their opinion on, on why they do it the way they do it. Then uh, we're gonna take this a little bit in an informal manner. After two or three of the steps, I'm gonna ask for your participation. I'm a strong believer that uh, we are called experts, but I always think that in the audience, there are a lot of experts. Um, I'm going to uh, take the, the, the lead in stopping the discussion. If it is going too long, then don't feel offended if at some point I cut some of the questions off because we have to maintain time. Um, let me introduce my panelist is Dr. Brandt Oeschlager, as it has been already introduced, Dr. Barry Salke, and Dr. David Edelman. Dr. David Edelman is in Miami. He is um, another of the authors of Pearls, and he's taking the place of Dr. Easter. Then uh, we're gonna start and uh, I'm just gonna give you a, a little introduction. This is then the procedure Nissen fundoplication. These are the steps that uh, we have put for each of the procedures. And for each of procedure, we're gonna have different surgeons. For example, this is the way how I do it. Uh, this is the way how do uh, Dr. Edelman does it. That's Dr. Wynn. Uh, this is how Dr. Oeschlager and Dr. Pellegrini do it. This is how Dr. Salki does it, of course. Because of the limits of time, I'm not gonna be able to show every single step. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to uh, stimulate the, the discussion, mainly with the present authors, and if needed, we'll, we'll tap into the other ones. Then let's start talking about two of the, um, of the aspects, and then we're gonna open to questions. Let's talk about patient position, and as well as how do you do the liver retraction. Then I'm going to let, um, let's start with Dr. Edelman. I'm gonna run his video very briefly and feel free to talk over um, the, the fir and try to explain why do you do what you do. Then on, we, we decided this to be um, a way to show again different ways and it is, it is set up for a little bit of controversy and a little bit of surgeon's bias. Then more than science, this is just technique. Uh, in this case, uh, Dr. Edelman stands uh, to the left of the patient, and these are the port sites. Then, David, do you want to tell us why do you use the port sites, and uh, how do you feel that uh, standing on the left of the patient is better? We need to put the, all the microphones on, please. So, standing on the left of the patient gives me a more direct view of the, of the hiatus and the cruise 
because I'm retracting the esophagus toward the left, it exposes things on, on the right. Um, it also tends, with, if you see in that picture, um, there's a, a device holding the, a liver retractor in place, so it actually puts me out of the way of, of the liver retractor standing um, uh, where I do, which is more on the patient's left lower side. Good. Do you feel that you have a better approach to the hiatus coming from the left? Well, it's, I think you can get an approach either way. It, it's, but with, when you set everything up and uh, I want to get my, um, my assistant out of the way, it's just I have more space where I can stand and get access, and I feel like I, I have a much better view of the, the right cruise and, and down at the arcuate ligament. So I feel very comfortable standing on the left of the patient. Barry, you stand, um, you stand in between the legs, correct? Where else would you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> Depends which legs you are in between. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I didn't say that. Sorry. Well, I don't even know if that's true, but okay. So, but the reason that I uh, in between the legs is because um, the uh, esophageal hiatus is in the midline, uh, and that. That allows me to put the monitor, I have a swing monitor, so the mini monitor can be over the head. Uh, that, meet, that puts all the anatomy in line. Uh, it allows me to use, um, especially from a suturing perspective, it allows me to use two hands to suture at right angles, which uh, I think is key to, uh, not that it can't be done the other way, it can, but it's just key to um, uh, having the proper angles for suturing, and it just puts everything in the, in the in the, in, the, in the middle, so I don't have to, my brain doesn't have to think across the table. Uh, and to me, that's a big advantage. I think, Brant, you, you do have um, a stand between the legs, uh, but it's five ports. Any other comments other than the ones that um, Barry had said? No, I think, uh, as usual, Dr. Salky's right. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, and I, I, the only thing I, and, 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 and that's no offense to you. No, no. <laughs> but um, I, I like to put my, uh, my surgeon's left hand actually a little bit to the right of midline uh, so that the right and left hands are at, at least 30 degrees from the, from the hiatus, which is, which is, as Dr. Soggy says, in the midline. And, and if you do that, the only way to sit, stand is between the legs unless you want to reach around the table. Now, I have reasonably long arms as a taller person, and, and it can be done, but it's not the most comfortable uh, situation. And it, uh, for residents and fellows of differing sizes, uh, that becomes a little bit more of a problem. I think probably maybe even certain size might, might uh, play, a, play a role here. I don't know what you think. Uh, about that data. surgeon size, right well, and left handedness too. I mean, it, all that stuff comes into play. Do you think it started really from uh, American lap coli was taught across the table as opposed to European lap coli, which was taught between the legs to begin with? You think that's where it came from? I think I think that's a very good point. And uh, this this type of procedure was one of the ones that started very early. We didn't have uh, standardized approaches and. Uh, I feel that several of us, including myself, started uh, from the left. I also approach it from the left just because that's how we used to do it over the lap coli. To solve the problem of the short hand, since I'm not as tall as you are, rather than using the, the, the porch on the, right, the, on the right side, I use it on the left. And um, let me ask you, Barry, did you start it the European way with the, for the gallbladders? Yes. And that's why you moved to this? Which is, yes, and that's the reason you'll have to excuse me for being here two minutes late because Jacques Parisov was getting this award and uh, he was one of the, the who, that's who I learned from originally. So, um, yes, I learned the French position to begin with with gallbladder. Uh, and uh, I, I actually even carry it today with uh, almost everything I do in foregut is uh, between the legs. Uh, it allows me to, once again, use two hands all the time uh, in a, uh, in a, in a direct manner, so to me it's easier. One of the disadvantages, uh, particularly at that time, to put the patient on, on a split leg position was the tables. We had to put the, on the stirrups. Can you tell the audience, both Brandt and Barry, what type of uh, split leg position do you put? Do you do GYN? Do you have one of the modern split legs? What are the advantages and disadvantages of any of that? Sure, you may go first. You go first, Brandt. Uh, we, uh, we put people in stirrups and lithotomies in a, in a low lithotomy position, not a high lithotomy position. We use a, 
<clears throat> we use a bean bag uh, under the under the rear end to form a saddle so that when we put them in reverse Trendelenburg, they don't fall. I, the, one of the disadvantages, frankly, for me is the time. I mean, it takes about depending on how facile you are setting that up, it takes somewhere between five and 15 minutes uh, for some of our newer fellows who are just setting it up to set it up. So you, you waste a little bit of time uh, setting it up, but, and, then, and then you have a little bit of risk the way we do it of, of some nerve injuries and things like that. So you have to be very careful, more so than you do in a supine position. But uh, once you know how to set it up, it's, it's pretty easy to do and I think very safe. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that, and, and I, not to say that I'm anal compulsive about it. Uh, we've been uh, we've been training fellows since uh, '93. Um, uh, puts a full uh, integrated uh, residency program. Uh, I position the patient myself. I position the patient myself. I am unbelievably afraid of nerve injuries. Um, for that matter, even if it's a supine, I'm like double checking to make sure that there's no pressure points anywhere because, and I've yet. Knock on wood, not had a uh, nerve injury yet, but um, I think you got to be really, really careful, really, really careful. So, Horacio, can I make a comment about standing on the patient's right side? Yes. If for the past couple of years, I've been standing on the patient's right side. It, it has to do with um, the new hospital I'm working doesn't have my needle holders, nor are they purchasing it. So, I've been using a processed, you know, suturing device, a commercially available suturing device. And since my largest trocar is in the midline and I'm right-handed, I found it easier to place the, the sutures with the, you know, with that device standing on the right side. So it, it just sort of, you have to then approach putting your trocars in um, appropriately and get out of the way. And it's been just fine. I mean, no, no major problems. Does that mean that in the past you were left liberal and now you're becoming a right conservative? <laughs> I'm going to move to, to the liver retraction. Um, the liver retraction, we have only two short videos, and then we're going to open for questions about positioning and liver retraction very briefly, um, uh, since there are a lot of the other steps. We have only two short videos I'm going to show, uh, and I'm going to reserve the right to speed it up. The one uh, from Dr. Wynn, who is another of the experts that was kind to cooperate with this product. Um, basically, he uses the, um, uh, the snake-type retractor, and um, even though it doesn't appear to be any major science, the positioning of this retractor is important. He puts it right. to, the other s to the right side of the falciform ligament. Uh, it is closed under direct visualization. And then um, you lift the left lobe of the liver, being careful not to cause any uh, capsular tears. Uh, the positioning should be such that allows you adequate access to the hiatus. I'm going to go back and I'm going to let Dr. Solke to show how he does it with a very simple palpating probe. 